The problem with Medicare for all is that when people say that it's affordable, this is affordable to the person who has the Medicare. It is not affordable to the country. In fact, it is so unaffordable to the country that the state of California was a nut job leftist state, just refused to even pass Medicare for all because it would have immediately doubled the debt. Just declaring things rights does not make them appear. What makes more things appear is a market-based system that creates more doctors, that creates more medical care, that creates more incentive for people to join up. It is better to treat things as goods than as rights, because declaring something a right just means that you have the right to steal it from me. <laughs> ben, I don't want to steal health insurance from you. I want you to be healthy. That's why I want Medicare for all. Um, you just want so to take my money and my wife's services. Conservatives seem a little confused about how health care works. And they're like, oh my god, it turns out the healthy subsidize the sick. Yeah, that's insurance! The idea that everybody who's paying into Medicaid paid for it and now they get out what they paid in is obviously not true. It is a redistributive program, and to pretend otherwise is just silly. The idea that all of these socialized medicine countries have it so much better than we do, particularly in terms of cancer care, is a joke. We are still number one in terms of five-year cancer survival rate here in the United States. Sure, there are different areas where we excel. But, Ben, honestly, you're cherry-picking there at one particular area that we're good. Overall, we're number 37. That is not a good result. The standard of care is the entire question when it comes to single-payer health care. But the fact is that rationing is mandated as soon as you start having the government run the health care system and decide what level of care people get. They don't care about me. They don't know my child's name. They don't know my name. All they know is how much I cost. So Ezekiel Emanuel comes out and says, listen, I want to die at 70, right? I want to die at 80. That's fine with me. I'd rather die at that. Well, that's good for him. But if I don't want to die at 80 or I don't want my father to die at 80, it's none of his damn business. Business. This idea that corporations are paying the highest tax rate is both, again, true and untrue. The part that it's true is, hey, it's, there's a rate of 35%. The part that's not true is, they don't actually pay that. There is giant loopholes. A tax loophole is just a tax deduction that's available to everyone, and some people take advantage of it and some people don't. The amount of tax revenue to the government right now is trillions of dollars every year. Uh, as economy. a percentage, it is clearly down. It, it, the top bracket now is around 39%. It used to be at 91 percent, right? But our economy is significantly larger than it was then, and part of that is because of reductions in taxes over previous decades. Well, we, <laughs> we tried supply-side economics. Hey, Kansas, how's that working out for you? There's this myth that... It's working uh, out for you. Your business is doing great. Okay, yeah. <laughs> for example, they uh, hide their money offshore. They do tricks like the double dutch and the Irish sandwich or the reverse. I would end that. I would say, hey, you know what? We've got a 35 percent rate. Here's the new rule. You're going to pay 35 percent, okay? And you're not allowed to hide your money. I don't care if it's in the Cayman Islands. We're going to make that illegal. Corporations, have, they don't have any of your interests at heart. You are a corporation. TYT is a corporation. You have 80 employees. I assume that you're not just a greedy ass and that you actually would like to help your, your employees from time to time. You seem to be identifying a higher tax rate in the 1950s with higher level of growth. So if that's the case, why not just tax everybody at 100% and we can have massive growth from here to eternity? Of course you have to find the right balance on all of these issues, including taxes. So I never said uh, there's no end to how much you can... I'm, I'm just asking pay. why, though. Yeah, so, so the, the, this leads to... No, wait a minute. So now, look, when, 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 that's not to say that that is the right tax rate for us today. And so the exercise of finding the right tax rate is... Guys, try to follow along, okay? It's called logic. So what we have to do as a society is figure out where we can maximize the most amount of good for, for the country. Be closer to zero or closer to the government, But not too much uh, away from us. So, for example, the reason why when taxes are higher, it winds up being better for the economy is because it recirculates the money. So if you give it to the rich, this is hilarious. If you're uneducated, please at least don't, <laughs> don't make it obvious. When the middle class has more money, disposable income, they spend it. Why? Because they're not living in the lap of luxury. They're not saving it for their yacht. So they need to buy food for their family. They need education for their family. So they spend it and it goes back into the economy. If you just give it in supply side economics to the rich and hope that it trickles down on us eventually decades later, what they wind up doing it with it is something that is logical. They save it. 
the problem with Keynesian economics is that it doesn't even work in theory because again, once you go to the logical extreme, which is remove all of the money from the rich people who are saving all their money and give it to all the poor people to buy hamburgers, that doesn't help the economy or spur the economy. What spurs the economy is the creation of new products and services and that is only going to be done by people who have exp expendable capital to actually invest in the new products and services that we all enjoy. This is what creates economic growth. You had an investor, right? When you started TYT, you were given $4 million by Buddy Romer to start TYT. That's great. That's the way business should work, right? But that money had, it didn't come from a bunch of poor people buying hamburgers. It came from a very, very wealthy guy who gave you money to create a business a lot of people want to patronize. If you want better products and better services, you need more investment in the products and services. The basic name trickle-down economics is not something that any conservative even proposed. It's a leftist revision of what economics actually is because you're not giving me the money. It was my money in the first place, created through voluntary transactions that I had with others. I've not stolen money from either from anyone, neither have you. And the idea that money has to be forcibly taken from you and handed to somebody at the bottom end of the economic spectrum to somehow jog the economy, that may jog McDonald's, but is not going to jog all of the creation of the products and services that make all of our lives much better today than they were 30 years ago in terms of the stuff we have access to. Come on. You were the one so the food. middle class is struggling right now, and we've turned this into a Walmart economy where people are getting $7.00 25 cents and that, that if you're getting around ten dollars I think that's about fifteen thousand a year so don't like that is serious pain and difficulties so if you give those people money it's not like ah, I just want to go get a hamburger and it's not and taxes is not stealing from you so you're right I run a business so in order for people my employees to get to my company you know what they have to do they have to drive on roads okay so it's not stealing from me to build that road. I don't think anyone argues that we don't need roads to get to work. The problem is that when you're talking about roads as a percentage of the budget, we are talking about a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of the federal budget and of the state budget and even of the local budget. So the idea that you're justifying massive tax rates on corporations in order to pay for roads is just intellectually dishonest. I think that the Republicans will definitely pass tax reform. They will do everything. They will move mountains to make sure that those rich donors and corporations will get their tax cuts. Republicans pass tax cuts because they're beholden to their donors. Okay, and Democrats pass tax increases because the unions give them hundreds of millions of dollars every year. And I don't see Democrats complain about this. You got me there. The unions give money to the Democrats. Am Are I you angry about that? I mean, does it upset you as much as, you know, bankers giving money to Republicans? No, no. Co the corporations give way more than the unions. Uh, so it depends it which up. corporations. That's, okay. That's not That's really okay. true. okay. Look it up. You can Google it. It's really easy. Here's the problem. Okay, TYT. I. We both have corporations and we expound upon politics every single day. And we motivate thousands of people, right, every day on both sides of the aisle. That is effectively an in-kind contribution. Now, I, you campaigned with Bernie Sanders. Did you do it because you expected, that's fine. Did you expect, did you do that because you supported Bernie Sanders or did you do that because you expected some gimme for TYT in return? I assume no. you did it because you supported Bernie Sanders, right? Yes. So, yes, okay. So, the point that I am making is to attribute to everyone else bad intent when it comes to political spending and politics, but to yourself, it's totally fine. And when it comes to other media entities that give in-kind contributions on a regular basis through their coverage... You say, well, what's the difference between uh, your speech and their speech? Mine is actually speech, and theirs is money. <laughs> so there's a giant difference. But you spend money on so, your speech. So, first off... So they say, uh, no, no, Supreme Court uh, says, no, money is speech now. No, money is property. It's not speech. And so if, if money was speech, well, then if you go to a hooker and you say, oh, no, uh, officer, I was just talking to her. Okay. <laughs> money is not speech. Again, I ask you. Buddy Romer gave you $4 million to start TYT. What did he expect in return? Should he not have given you money? Was the money not speech? It was just money, after all. It was just like a hooker, I assume. So are you the prostitute? How did this work? When you take money from Al Jazeera, okay. does that make you a hooker so for the Qatari? That was How does that awesome, work? Can I, that was an awesome conflation. Okay, we were talking about money in politics and how money is not speech when you give it as a campaign donation, and you turn it around to a business investment. You know, in a business investment, it has nothing to do with speech. Money is money. They gave us an investment, so, because they believed in our business. Good. That and has nothing to do with politics. That's great. And you think the government is in the business of regulating so, business. So, so, if the government is in the business of regulating business, what would be the problem with the government telling Buddy Romer he is not allowed to invest in your business? No, that has, no, no, those are two different issues. No problem, no problem. So when the Koch brothers or Bloomberg or Soros puts in hundreds of millions of dollars into elections, 
you think, well, I just do them because they're good guys and they want, and they just, they, they damn well please buying all those politicians. Or you think, no, the politicians would never be affected by hundreds of millions of dollars in legalized bribes. Chank. So I'm curious what your opinion on that is. So, okay, do you so, think that they're just golly chucks? So, uh, they just mean well? And Chank, you're a lawyer, so you know that bribery requires two parties to the bribe. If I give money to a politician, there must be something in return. If there is no quid pro quo, there is no bribery. You think there's nothing in return? Well, you have you to think the politicians don't no, do those I think, favors? I think, no, I think very often there is something in return. But I want you to point me to the things that are in return, not just say that all spending on politics ought to be forbidden except for the Young Turks. No, that is of course not what we say. Young Turks is super successful. We have 80 million uniques. It's, it's wonderful. Do you think Thank Bernie you. Sanders would care more if you gave him $10,000 or if you dedicated your entire network to kissing his ass for an election cycle? <laughs>